So I'm just going to freestyle it. What? Uh, that is uh, the things I say I'm going to freestyle on this video since the last video sounded so canned and was very scripted. So I believe that Grenoble is probably the least known of all French cities uh, to American tourists. And to me that's really surprising because it's the only major French city at the, uh, literally in the Alps. And it also has all those things that you just love about French cities. It's a small city compared to Paris. I think it's smaller than a single arrondissement of Paris. Obviously, a lot of people are off work based on how packed it is down here. No, Grenoble doesn't get many tourists, but it does have a pretty international community because it's uh, known as the quote-unquote Silicon Valley of Grenoble, I mean of France. So there's a lot of um, international companies, a lot of high-tech. Those companies bring in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people, a lot of engineers and so forth from other countries, including the U.S. That is the church where we went to um, the Christmas, our Christmas service, and they project a really cool light show on the front of the church. The church is not very old by French standards, but very old by U.S. standards. It dates to 1699, so a little less than 100 years before the French Revolution. Here's maybe a better look at it. Here we are, sort of skirting along the side of the church. Take a little shortcut to the park where the Christmas Marche was. They're already in the process of tearing it down. Um, I wish they would keep it going during the week between Christmas and New Year's when everybody's off. It's a, it's a little hokey, a little contrived, kind of, um, kind of like a boxed kit as you can see the, from the back of the buildings. But um, they actually have some pretty cool artisans in there. And um, they, you know, Vent Chaux, which is the hot spiced wine that's popular during Christmas, and oysters, which are a Christmas tradition in France. So lots of delicious, fresh oysters, you can see. They're well into tearing it down. One of those who's not fond of Christmas just coming to a sudden screeching halt after the 25th. <laughs> I think it should last at least through New Year's. 
and then ebb away. One of the really cool things about France, French cities is the, the amount of varied small retail, something that was long ago killed off in the US, first by big box stores and then by Amazon. But here, I mean, Amazon exists, and I'm sure it's doing a lot of damage. But um, people, I just think, are, because they live in, in dense cities, uh, retail continues to exist, and it's such a critical part of what makes France a great place to live. It's what makes cities livable. I'm going to take a little detour here. Ain't that cool? Oh, just infill, infill uh, type of theater. Yeah, movie theater still, still. Uh, I'm not. I don't know if they thrive, but they still exist and do fairly well. People still go to movies here. All right, which way should I go? Now we're going totally aimless. <laughs> I mean, wow. And you know, even in the buildings that have smooth stucco, that's the kind of stonework that exists behind the stucco. So I haven't had the opportunity to really spend a lot of time in other French cities. You know, a day or two in Lyon, uh, a week or so in Paris, But, as far as I can tell, Grenoble fits the bill for me. One of the amazing things about Grenoble is that it's known as the flattest city in France, which makes it super bikeable and super ironic because it's the city that is most surrounded by mountains, or most in the mountains. It's uh, Alps on one side, the Chartreuse Mountains on another side, and the Vercors Mountains on the third side. So it's a, a little bit of a, uh, it's a valley. This is one of Grenoble's Grand Boulevards and um, I've forgotten what it's called. <laughs> I think maybe Jean Jaurès. We'll check on that. Oh, here comes up a sign. Yeah, Jean Jaurès. Quite beautiful how uh, French France does their sort of wide boulevards, uh, whereas the US wide boulevards tend to be quite ugly and asphalty. Don't need to pay Paris prices to live the Parisian lifestyle of cafes and, you know, baguettes <laughs> and wine. It's kind of an easier pace, uh, easier pace of life. Grenoble's quite affordable and I've 
I've heard that other cities are as well. My basis of comparison for cost is Southern California and San Diego specifically where the average cost of a home the last I checked was a million dollars average here from what I can tell for a single family resident it's not cheap it's closer to five or six hundred thousand euro um, actually don't quote me on that that's just my own uh, looking at ads <laughs> so that's not based on any kind of statistic but um, apartments are much, much less expensive. Uh, apartments, and by, by that I mean in the US we would call them condominiums, where you own them. Whereas in, the, in San Diego, downtown apartments or condominiums were even more expensive, or at least equal to single family residents on a square foot basis. And then adding a really expensive homeowner association fees of you know upwards of six hundred dollars a month so compared to that Grenoble is very affordable we bought our our I should say 120 square meter apartment which I think equates to um, what does it equate to about nine hundred thousand square feet something like that um, we bought it for 230,000 now in downtown San Diego that would have cost easily upwards of a million two million maybe another thing that got taken down very quickly after Christmas was the ice skating rink which was right here the trees still there yeah I just don't get it why they take it all down so quickly when obviously everybody's on holiday vacation judging by the amount of people oh yeah this just opened <laughs> Starbucks <laughs> and um, let me see let's circle back <laughs> just opened and uh, I swear Starbucks is looking more and more like the McDonald's and I don't know, French have kind of a fascination with things American, um, but, but <laughs> it's hard for me to fathom choosing a Starbucks over a French cafe. Not only is um, Starbucks coffee doesn't taste as good as a French coffee, but it's more expensive. You can see the mountains up there. Oh, it's actually been quite warm and the snow level is quite high. Um, in other words, not much snow. Uh, there's almost no snow below 2,000 feet. Excuse me, 2,000 meters. So that's about 6,000 feet. Normally it should be down to about 3,000 feet or 1,000 meters. Another cool little pedestrian shopping street. Not so little, actually. So yeah, it's um, always busy here on weekends and uh, really all every day, except maybe Sunday and Monday. But this is especially busy. Grenoble's quite a young town. Um, there's a lot of families here because the, it's a pretty solid employment base and there's also a giant university here, one of France's largest, called the University of Grenoble Alps. And uh, there's also a lot of um, outdoor activities here the, because of the, the Alps and all the mountain activities that come with it. So those, uh, up at the top there is the Bastille Fortress. 
is the fortress wall and then below that are two old um, university buildings one has been completely rehabbed recently into student housing and the other one's still a hot mess I'm, I've got a feeling somebody's grabbed it up by now and it's got plans for it and then you see there to the left um, that is called the I forgot what it's called it's an old monastery I believe anyway it's a museum muse it's a museum now and uh, this is the Saint Laurent bridge pedestrian bridge it's like Paris How and do um, yeah usually there's a lot of joggers around too Grenoble is one of the fittest places I've ever been I've been completely shamed in any physical activity I've done by people who are older than me who just cruise by me effortlessly whether it's running or biking or you name it this is the Saint Laurent neighborhood and I was um, kind of known as the Italian neighborhood I think it still is kind of known as sort of the Italian neighborhood there were a lot of Italian immigrants to Grenoble and this uh, just kind of runs along the side of the river and that would be the Isère River I-S-E-R-E -E. this is a little pub or bar called uh, I'll confess basically confessional and Sam and I keep planning to go here but we never remember to actually do it so uh oh anyway quite beautiful in here A lot of museums in Grenoble, and that is the um, old Saint Laurent church, but it's been converted into a museum and it goes all the way back to Roman times. And it's got a lot of uh, excavated corpses, <laughs> skeletons. They're pretty cool. We're going to go along the river here a little bit. As you can tell, some good bicycle infrastructure in Grenoble. On the third floor there where it says Vendu in the uh, orange and white sign is where we lived for a year. And these pubs get packed with students during the, the daytime. And it's kind of the Celtic corner here because you see there's O'Callaghan Irish Pub uh belges friterie brugs okay so that place isn't uh, so much uh from the uh british isles but there you've got shakespeare pub selling guinness or featuring guinness so um yeah <laughs> kind of ironic here in in uh france and here you have la peña andalusia also not a uh French restaurant and straight ahead you have Le, Com Le Table Ronde which I believe is the oldest establishment in Grenoble goes I mean that still exists dating back to well let's see here's a sign excuse me cut those people off 1739 so not as old as the church we went to but uh, looks like some of their customers included Stendhal, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Chaudrelot de la Croix, I don't know how to pronounce that, a few others. And this is the Saint-André Saint Saint Chapel, not the oldest church in Grenoble, but 
pretty darn old. It goes back to, I think, 1200 and something. Ah, there we can take a look. 1228. So those are Les Boules, Grenoble's tram that goes up to the Bastille Fortress. And uh, Les Boules means the bubbles. I think I have that right. I could be wrong though. Net call. And of course, a beautiful pastel buildings along the river, I think are one of Grenoble's cool features. And this is the Jardin, as we called it. Um, it's got a longer name, I've forgotten what it is. But it's uh, kind of the park right in the oldest core part of the city. And uh, it is, the bulls were just as packed as I've ever seen it. And the cool thing is it's not tourists. It's actually locals, because that's how uh, Grenoble rolls. It's not a big touristy city, but everybody's on holiday. Got the week off. Isn't that cool? These buildings. Grenoble's like a great combination of urbanism, nature, and uh, but there's something else there. Urbanism, nature, yeah, well, and culture. Culture, yep. It's, it's a subset of urbanism. A lot of museums, a lot of um, cultural activities. And at night, uh, it's so beautiful the way these Christmas lights are lit up and you can see them. When we first came to Grenoble, we were actually not impressed. We were saying in honesty, and honesty spelled A N N E C Y. It's got this beautiful crystal clear lake. It's very touristy. A very touristy area right there at the lake and it's um so you know and Gr Gr Grenoble seems a bit gritty there's graffiti and on top of that uh, you know, it's kind of a silty dirty river instead of a crystal cl clear lake but um I don't know our way of looking at it changed rapidly because of the just the, the sort of French lifestyle and the the people on the street that you know families and diversity and it's kind of a whole human um, ecology here a holistic environment schools and shops and residents and industry and eateries so that when you walk or bike around the city it just puts a smile on your face and then some butthole in a car comes and honks at you <laughs> and kills the buzz <laughs> occasionally <laughs> but no for the most part it's awesome This makes me happy, just coming out, coming out after working a little bit and coming out and just biking around just makes me happy in a way that I never felt in the U.S. I loved my city, San Diego, and I loved how it was developing, but it wasn't, it was incomplete, not just, not just uh, in the built environment, but the, the people that populated it. And then the number of homeless was, it just, uh, I just used to just come home angry thinking about like how the richest, how could the richest country in the world allow that to exist? 
So it came back at night to catch some of the Christmas lights. So it's uh, after 10 now on a Tuesday night. So it's pretty quiet. Wow, that's the best. I think. Anyway, that's what it looks like just after Christmas. Next year I'll try to get it before Christmas. This year I was a bit preoccupied with a uh, travel fiasco that we had and then all the all the kids and wife got sick. So, I was a little bit behind the behind my game <laughs> this year. So, cheerios. Ciao for now.